one no one wants to realize um, that they were so very much at risk. We as a society have always, before there were brick and mortar, back when they were push carts, back when they were uh, uh, set up um, set up stands, uh, yeah. you know, like at a farmer's yeah. market or something like that. There are tons of farmer's markets around San Diego, for example, where you can go and, and, and hawk your wares and wander around on a Saturday or Sunday morning and and bump into people and see some things that you might not have seen, you know, street fairs and that. We yeah. have taken that for granted for centuries. And now yes. all of a sudden, um, not only is it dangerous, but it's precluded by the powers that be. This is bad for the people who can't buy things, and it's worse for the people who can't sell things. Yes. Um, yes. It's, it's kind of the way this whole thing has worked, and it's been brilliant by the people that have sought to put it into place, none of whom were nice. Um, <laughs> it's like the idea of cooking a lobster. If you drop it in a pot of hot water, that lobster is going to thrash and possibly even throw itself out of the pot. Yeah. But it's going to make a hell of a splash and a hell of a mess and is going to be loud and really unhappy. You're actually going to hear that lobster. Yeah. If you put that lobster in a pot of cold water and just turn the heat on and let the heat slowly come up, you got yourself dinner. Um, the slow heating up is what's been going on. Compliments of China and yep. uh, unscrupulous uh, uh, business people and unscrupulous political people throughout the world that have various levels of um, agenda, all of which involve around money or power. Uh, there's no question about that. Yes. Uh, so we sit here, we the lobsters, sitting in this pot of cool water saying, hey, wow, you know, Temperature's going up a little bit, but I'm sure it'll cool off. Yeah. This is going to go away. Yeah. That's going to go away. The government's going to take care of this. Um, you know, business is going to come back. And, oh, look, wait, wait. The, the unemployment rate is dropping again. It's coming back a little. And, and the temperature's going down a little and up and back until we're going to get to a point where we can't get out of the pot. Um, and that better horrify a lot of people because they're all in the pot. Um, and, yes, and and that's that's where it's at. So all of a sudden, they realize that well, it's really important to be able to get out and walk into a store. I walk down the street in this cute little town, and it's all full of stores. And if I can't go in it, stores are going to close, and this town's not going to be cute anymore. Why the hell am I living here? <laughs> um, and, and, and well, that do. It's like it's it's like people who live someplace so that they can commute to work, and now that they don't have to commute, and they go live wherever they want. Um, having ambient places to live is important. It, it, yes. It's important on so many yeah. levels. And when those stores can't pay the rent and those buildings get boarded up, the people that own those buildings are going to are gonna suffer financially. Now, some of them will go on and be able to do other things, and some of them are going are gonna to drop like rocks financially. Yeah. And then that's going to back up the pipe. And you have exactly the opposite multiplier going on that you have when business is open. Uh, you have a spiraling effect that is not only economic, it is social, it is emotional. I mean, who wants to work into a town? When I lived in Saratoga in the 70s, 40% of the storefronts were closed. Wow. Early wow. in the 70s. Uh, mostly they were closed because the town had been singularly dependent on summer traffic for, for one or two months of the year. And the rest of the year, nobody gave a crap. And the primary employer in town was Skidmore College, where my wife attended. <laughs> and I worked. And uh, uh, anyway, and some people may argue I didn't work all that hard, but that's another story. <laughs> but in the meantime, <laughs> what happened was is a lot of young that's people awesome. who were in their 20s started businesses and went into these little hole in the wall buildings that were empty and for two or three hundred dollars a month to start with they could open up a business in a storefront they opened restaurants they opened little furniture stores they opened taverns some of which are still open from the 1970s and they began and these guys are not kids anymore okay and they began these businesses and all of a sudden the town was 
fully rented up. And when you walk down the streets of Saratoga, it was adorable. You know, you had this street, you had that street, you had this 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 little restaurant and this little pub and this lunch. Yep, and yep. Now you start closing those down. And the town went from twenty five to almost forty five thousand people in the general area. Uh, you start wow. closing those down and you have population shift. And population shift like that is never never good no they be you, you have operational ghost towns and pretty soon if you have a, a whole country of ghost towns what you then have is eastern russia you have yep. or if you've never taken the drive take the drive through connecticut where all the industrial towns used to be and all the factories are empty and there's nothing there or you go into where Schenectady was a couple of years ago, where um, GE had just tightened up and folded, almost folded. Yeah. And you had houses you could buy for $6,000. Um, and nobody was buying them. And these are like, you know, 2,500 square foot houses. These, were, these weren't, you know, crap houses. <laughs> um <clears throat> they all might have needed some work, but everything needs work when you're in upstate New York because of the weather. <laughs> yes. In any event, yeah. if you do this on a town by town basis, that's one thing. Hey, but, you know, the uh, the paper mill closed or this happened. But if it goes to 70% of the country, uh, we're going over to the lead standard. That can't wow. be good. So... What what do you think's gonna happen here, Rich, with this uh, COVID relief bill that they're uh, that they're trying to get passed? At last I well, knew they wanted to give everybody three hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, the government's gonna print up money. They're gonna hand it out. They're gonna make everybody feel good. But what's really gonna work well is if these bloody vaccines work well, and if people get out and stop listening to these morons and say, you know, I got to be careful. Maybe I got to wear a mask. Maybe I got to wash my hands a hell of a lot more. And we have to be a bit distanced. Um, and uh, But we're going to get by and we're going to keep the economy going. And we're going to keep our lives going. I was walking through a, a I was walking yesterday, I was just crossing by somebody's path uh, on the way from one spot to another. I don't even know if I was in a store. Uh, and there were two women standing there, and they were waiting. Where you know how people wait to cross each other's paths? Oh yes. And oh, one yes. looked, and one hesitated, and one was moving, and one wasn't. And I said, "You know what the problem here is, ladies? We can't <laughs> smile at each other. Yes. We're all wearing yeah. masks. Yep. And we need to put more smile in our eyes, so we understand that we're not challenging and offending each other. We're just walking in the same general space at the same time." Yes. Now, yeah. they got it. Uh, and that's what we have to do. We have to get out, and we have to ignore the Mario Comos and the <laughs> Murphys out of Jersey and the Governor Nuisances out of Sacramento. <laughs> and ah, yes. To, and we have to say, you know what? You're rich, and you're going to do whatever the hell you want anyway. We're going to get out and do things. Uh, and we're, we're, we're not going to endanger society. We're going to be respectful, but we're going to live. We're going to, we're going to take our push cart to the corner and we're going to wash the apples when we sell them. And we're going to wash the apples when they take them home, but we're going to put that goddamn push cart out on the corner. And if you don't like it, too bad. <laughs> That's fantastic. And that's what you have to do. And these brick and mortar stores are going to have to do that. And everybody's yes. going to have to tighten the belt. The landlord's got to tighten the belt. The bank that he pays the mortgage to is going to have to tighten the belt. But if you don't tighten the belt, you're going to get strangled by it. Yes. Everybody's going to have to back up. And the economy is going to recede a little bit because the amount of money is going to move a little less. But it will all keep moving if we stop being greedy and we stop being browbeaten. And the 73.4 million people that legitimately voted this time around coordinate their efforts. And that's something else we'll be talking about really soon. Yes. <laughs> Very much so. Um, 
Rich, as always, I appreciate you. Um, wrap us up here for the for for the year here. What 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 are some of the things you're hoping gets accomplished next year? I hope the vaccine works. I hope everybody takes it. I hope all the politicos that keep talking about how they don't trust it don't get any. <laughs> Because they can all, frankly, as far as I'm concerned, they can all go to hell and take their families with them. If that's what you want to do to other people, don't take it. That's great. Um, <laughs> that's it. You know, you want to you want to be like this. You want to be like the 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 morons that wouldn't wouldn't take uh, uh, any of the other vaccines. You know, when when my grandchildren were taking the vaccines. I insisted that their parents have the doctor spread them out. It's inconvenient to the doctor, but you got to spread it out because you're dumping yes. too many chemicals in an infant at the same time. Yes. And this way you can see if some are reacting badly and some aren't. I didn't say don't take the vaccines because we don't need a revival of polio and smallpox and measles and, oh, and, yeah. and mumps well, and all those that we do. Yeah. We uh, we definitely don't need all that. Good Lord, that is that is just a a recipe for disaster, my friend. I'll be still with us. His Skype went away. Maybe his Skype was hiccuping. Okay, we'll do this. We'll call Rich back. I will call Rich. There we are. Mm. Gotta love technology. Technology's good when it works. Technology's not good I, I when it does work. I lost. I lost <laughs> you there. Well, your your last words before before we we had the hiccup on Skype was spacing out the vaccines. So pick yeah. us up from there, my friend. If if you space out the vaccines, you can you're giving you're giving the infant a chance to absorb it, and you you're also giving a chance to see if any one of them in particular is not good for that person. Because on a massive basis, vaccines are a good thing, but on an individual basis, sometimes they create issues, and I. I'm extremely concerned about that. But you can't turn around and say no, because then we're going to have a resurgence of all these dreaded disorders that we yes. eliminated yes. With vaccines. Yes. yes. And you can't have political vaccines. You know, like the uh, uh, the one that they want to give that is uh, to, to everybody, because they want to insist on giving it to everybody. Uh, what's the one that, uh, the one that prevents... Uh, 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 sexually transmitted. Uh, oh um, yeah. Uh, uh, a disorder. I can't. I can't think of it right now. But it was originally devised to help people who have extremely or in areas where promiscuity among young people is 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 prevalent. Yes. Well, that's not prevalent all the way across the board. But it was absolutely in the interests of the politicians and the pharmaceutical companies that paid them. To say, oh, everybody has to have this because all children are promiscuous. Well, that's horseshit, <laughs> and that's and that and that's dangerous medication. Yes, and, and yes. that's where a transition has to take place. I understand politics. I'm a political scientist by by heart and by training, and and yes, I got to tell you. When you're politicking, when you're campaigning, when you're trying to get across your point and try to get elected, that's politics, and I understand that. But the day that election's over, that politics has to change to pragmatism and public interest. Politics got to go out the window. If you can't make that transition, don't get in the game. Do the world a favor and don't get in the game. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that's where we'll leave it, my friend. And uh, I appreciate you doing this. And I will uh, talk to you in a couple weeks. We'll be in January. And uh, oh boy, we're going to have all sorts of fun. <laughs> in the meantime, you and yours have a great Christmas. Definitely. Definitely. I will talk to you soon. Thank you, Rich. 
Alrighty. Appreciate it, brother. Thank there you. he goes. Richard Kurtz, Strategies PR. La Jolla Writers Conference. We're going to take a timeout.